So hi, everybody. Thanks for joining us today. Um, we are here for the Power Area Pathway presentation, and we're going to get started uh, with Professor Ayanar. As a reminder, um, if you have questions, please use them in the chat. And um, if you join, we ask you to please have your microphone on mute just to avoid any extra noise. Um, but I think we're ready to get started. So thanks, Professor Ayanar. OK, thanks, Bob. Um, so good morning, everyone. Uh, thanks for joining. It's uh, nice to see a very good uh, turnout for this um, pathway seminar. Mm -hmm. um, I am the um, area chair for the uh, EPES group, Electric Power and Energy Systems group. And uh, today I'll give um, roughly a 20 minute overview of our program, uh, focusing mostly on the uh, undergraduate courses that uh, we offer. Um, so you probably may have heard of uh, our program being among the, uh, you know, the largest uh, in the country for electric power and energy systems. Um, and it is not just the numbers in terms of number of faculty, uh, graduate and, and undergraduate students. It is also in terms of uh, you know, the, our um, diversity in terms of research expertise, uh, the simulation and hardware tools uh, and experimental capabilities that we have uh, built up over the years uh, at ASU that uh, kind of distinguishes our program from many of our uh, peer programs. Um, and it is also among the top three, at least in the, in the nation, in terms of the research excellence, excellence and recognition. Uh, that is in terms of uh, like the faculty awards. We have three members of the National Academy of Engineering, which is um, the highest honor for uh, any engineer or engineering professor. And um, it's, you know, most universities have three and we have three in just in one um, uh, program within ECE department. Um, again, uh, our graduates have an excellent record with uh, both employers and uh, graduate schools, again, across the country and even internationally. And uh, one key thing that I want to emphasize right at the beginning is, um, you know, the power area, power and energy systems area has uh, excellent uh, employment opportunities uh, for several reasons, you know, some of them listed here. Uh, it's very difficult to outsource power engineering. It has been done here in the country locally, uh, unlike uh, an IT which can be shipped uh, outsourced. Outsourced. Um, then, um, you know, for quite some time, uh, investment in the infrastructures for transmission, distribution, and overall power systems engineering has been uh, lagging. Uh, so there is a uh, you know a, a tremendous need now to focus on these infrastructures. Um, but out of all these, the most important one for you know going forward is that uh, you know you all know that climate change is a, is an existential threat, and um, probably the the key uh, focus of you know your generation of engineers would be to solve these um, climate change induced uh, catastrophes and other challenges. Um, so electric power is in the forefront of of these technologies to combat climate change. Uh, you know, for example, if you want to talk about emission reduction, uh, the big uh, sectors that produce emission is the electricity generation and the transportation, both of which are directly impacted by the power engineering um, engineers. Right? So, um, you know, in terms of generation, renewable generation can um, uh, completely eliminate carbon coal-based um, power generation. Um, transportation, electric vehicles, it is a key part of the power electronics part of the power group. Uh, and even uh, when there is these, um, you know, big weather events, uh, to have a resilient power grid, like you can think of mi microgrid. So nowadays, anytime there is this major hurricane, it is almost a routine that uh, millions of people lose power for you know, several days, it's become the norm. It does not have to be that way. And uh, you know, many in our group are addressing that kind of uh, resiliency, how to build resiliency, microgrids kind of thing. So it's so a lot of um, um, opportunities, both for research and employment in this area. So uh, these are the power area faculty members. Um, I work in power electronics and um, integration of large scale renewable to the grid. Professor Hedman, he is an energy markets specialist. Uh, Professor Haidt is uh, retired now. Uh, he continues as a professor emeritus. Um, he is one of the National Academy Engineering uh, member that I mentioned. Um, he worked on power quality distribution system engineering, uh, and he continues to do some research in that area. 
uh, Professor Holbert is a nuclear engineer. Uh, he directs our nuclear engineering graduate uh, program. Uh, Professor Korsan Hedman, uh, he's our own uh, graduate uh, three years ago. Uh, she works in um, high power transmission protection and some renewable integration as well. Professor Chen Lei, just like me, is a power electronics specialist. Professor Anamitra Paul, he works on synchro phases, micro PMUs, wide area measurements, things like that. And uh, Professor Ranchram, he is um, he, he will be joining our group in uh, uh, January next year. So he is uh, he just graduated from MIT, and uh, he is um, you know, and we're excited that he'll join here and uh, strengthen our power electronics program further. Uh, Professor Shankar, he she is um, a cybersecurity ex uh, expert, cybersecurity and privacy as applied to power systems. Uh, Professor Tylovsky also uh, I think is retiring this year. Um, his main area of specialty is in um, uh, numerical methods and uh, computer solutions for power systems. Uh, Professor Vijay Vital, another NAE member, uh, he is uh, world renowned for his work in uh, power system dynamics and power systems control. Professor Yang Weng, um, he is the um, our machine learning guru uh, as applied to power systems, transportation. Uh, and um, finally, Professor Meng Wu, uh, she works on power system reliability and the large scale renewable integration, mainly in the distribution system. Um, so that is our group. In terms of courses, um, obviously, AAA 360, our pathway course, uh, anyone who wants to um, specialize in this area would have to go through 360. Then the other 400 level courses that we offer are listed here, 460, 63, 70, 71, 72, 73, and uh, the senior design projects. Um, all of these courses, um, um, except for AAA 473, they are offered uh, as internet and hybrid courses. So. You have that choice uh, as well. So I'll go through um, some more details of each of these courses, but these are the list of the complete undergraduate power courses that we offer in our program. Okay, so uh, we are probably one of the unique uh, groups that offers your, your concentration. So there is a concentration in electric power and energy systems that you can take up. The specific requirements for this concentration, you have to obviously go through the 360. It's a four credit course. It has a lab associated with it. Um, and um, Professor Ranchram that I talked about in the previous slide from MIT, he will teach that uh, in spring um, next year. Um, then um, you'll have to take at least nine hours of uh, these um, power system related tech electives. Um, that's any of the courses that I listed in the previous, previous slide, 460 and 470s. Um, 46X and 47X, uh, along with uh, any of the approved special uh, 498 uh, special topics courses like the solar energy course, for example. Uh, and then at most one of either this uh, IEE 300 or 431. Uh, another key requirement is that you should do your uh, capstone senior design project in the uh, power engineering area. Uh, typically that is defined as uh, as long as your mentor or a co-mentor uh, is in the, um, in, in the power energy systems group, then it qualifies. Um, if not, you'll have to get special permission from the associate chair that it does qualify as a power related uh, senior design project. Okay, so uh, I think one of the key questions that uh, will be in your mind, I think would be, um, you know, I have these several courses, which would be uh, the best if I'm gonna take only a few courses. Um, so what power courses should you take? So in general, uh, power engineering, you can think of it as a three major subdivisions as shown here, power generation, then uh, transmitting from the generators to the uh, load centers, that's the transmission and distribution or TNT, and finally the use of electricity, electricity utilization. So our courses are structured that it covers, um, uh, and together they cover each and every one of these uh, major subdisciplines in terms of power generation, uh, it includes uh, you know, the port plant uh, understanding, operation, and uh, design of these. Uh, nowadays, it includes significant amount of renewable resources and distributed generation. And uh, power markets, uh, even though it is a more advanced topic, some aspects of that will be covered in the two courses related to the power generation. In terms of TND, it includes, this is the, the bulk of the power systems analysis. Um, so we have two courses related to this. Um, high voltage engineering protection and uh, control uh, at the level of uh, you know, bulk power 
that is also part of the what we study and uh, practice in a transmission and distribution uh, subdiscipline. Uh, finally, the electricity use uh, through the power electronics and uh, electric machines uh, that includes uh, electrified transportation and many other appliances and control of these devices. So that is the, the core part of power engineering. And um, so normally when you think about power systems, what comes to mind is this big network of transmission um, towers and lines. And um, uh, that is true, that is the big part of power engineering. But even at a much smaller scale, the power system in a large aircraft, a very large ship, they also are not very different from the, uh, you know, the traditional power grid that comes to mind. So they also have uh, internally the, the generation, transmission distribution, and the end use. Uh, so the reason I say this is if you are specializing in power, uh, you can also you know, take up employments in these other related sectors as well. Okay, so for each of these um, subdivisions, when I introduce the courses, I have just one slide that is kind of gives an overview um, or something special about that subdivision. Um, so for renewable, for generation, the one that I chose to put was the renewable energy, because that is the key um, type of uh, renewable, key type of generation going forward. So the, the picture on the left shows the share of different um, energy resources in the, um, you know, uh, in the new capacity that is being added each year. So if you look at uh, 2010, for example, uh, the, sorry, the share of solar was only 4% of whatever generation was added in the year 2010. But if you come to say 2020, that was the last year for which we had complete data, um, we had the solar share was 44% of any new generation that was added in the year 2020. Uh, wind made of another 38% and the natural gas is 17%. Um, if you go to 2021, this is not the complete year. I think it was end of quarter two. Uh, it is even more drastic. Uh, solar and wind together account for you know, almost everything. Uh, so no more conventional coal, not even natural gas. It's all renewable related um, generation. Uh, and if you look at the pipeline of what is gonna come in the years after, it is also completely dominated by solar and, and wind. So that shows to prove that there is a lot of um, opportunities in the renewable energy area, uh, both research, employment. Um, so. Okay, so the courses related to power generation, there are two of them, 463, is the overall electric power plants. Uh, so that includes all the conventional fossil fuel-based uh, generators, um, some discussions on the nuclear generators and increasingly renewable generators. So it talks about the power plant thermal cycles, uh, co-generation combined cycles, um, and again, at a preliminary overview level, economics and operations of the power stations. And these are topics that we'll cover in more detail in the graduate courses. So we have about 15 or more graduate courses covering various aspects of power engineering. And all of these courses are very good preparation for those advanced courses. The other course related to power generation is the nuclear power engineering. Professor Holbert teaches that. So it starts with a you know overview of radioactivity and then goes on to discuss the operation of uh, nuclear reactors, the design of them, um, and uh, some of the recent uh, events related to nuclear power engineering. Okay, then moving on to the transmission and distribution, um, the introductory slide that I have is related to the 2003 blackout. I uh, show that because um, you know these are uh, maybe talk, talking about um, issues that are re really life and death issues. So this blackout that happened uh, almost 18 years ago, um, it affected more than 50 million people uh, in the uh, Northeast uh, United States and parts of Canada. Um, and um, people lost power for you know, several days, almost a week. Uh, and you know, many deaths and uh, huge uh, billions of dollars lost. Um, so this is what uh, makes uh, you know also interesting that these are real world problems. So so you are you get to solve real world problems. Okay, so in this uh, subdivision T and D area, we are, we offer two courses, and uh, I would say these are the most uh, um, critical courses in power engineering. So for example, if you can do only one course other than 360 in the power area, I would say that should be the 471, the power system analysis. 
um, so that covers the um, you know, fault analysis as well as the power flow analysis. So power flow basically means that you, know, you have these um, you know, hundreds of thousands of buses and conductors. So if you have some basic information about the generators and their loads, then you can use the power flow analysis, uh, predict what is going to be the voltage at these hundreds of thousand buses, what is the current flowing through each of these conductors. Uh, and that is very important to reliably operate the entire power grid. Uh, it also deals with the uh, you know, fault analysis using the symmetrical components. Um, 470 is electric power devices. Um, it focuses on the uh, devices that we use for short circuit protection, like the circuit breakers, the relays that operate the circuit breakers, the current and voltage sensors that um, you know, detect your, uh, your fault and um, relays that there should be a protective action taking place. Um, yeah, so as I said, 470 and 471 are the two most important courses uh, if you want to specialize in this uh, in this area. Uh, and especially 471 would be a prerequisite for many of our graduate level courses. And then moving on to the last uh, subdivision, which is the energy utilization. Um, so that is um, all about power electronics and electric machines uh, nowadays, even your basic appliances like um, washers, dryers, uh, uh, air conditioners, we are all moving into controllable adjustable speed machines, which are driven by um, you know, power, power converters and uh, like permanent magnet synchronous machines and so on. Um, so the courses that uh, are related to the electric energy utilization are 472, power electronics and power management, uh, and 473, electrical machines. Um, so in 472, uh, I, I've taught that several times. Now, Professor Chen Lei teaches it, and uh, Professor Ranjram, when he comes uh, on board next year, he will also be teaching the 472. Um, so it covers the, um, uh, at least the way I taught it, it is a design-oriented analysis of uh, power converters in some of the most important applications that include powering the information technology, electric vehicles, and renewable energy integration to the grid. Uh, electric machines, uh, we have only one course related to machines, so it covers all the major types of machines, including DC machines, uh, AC induction machines, synchronous machines, permanent magnet synchronous machines, and not only the machine uh, construction and operation, but also how we control them in electric drives for different uh, industry automation, uh, as well as in electric vehicles. Okay, so that's uh, about our main uh, courses. In terms of senior design project, which would be a requirement if you're doing the concentration that you do it in the in the uh, power area with um, power area faculty as, as a mentor. So some of the recent uh, senior design projects are listed. The Solar District Cup is actually a Dep Department of Energy competition. This is in the third year now. Um, and uh, last year I mentored one, they went up to the final stage. Uh, I'm also signed up to uh, mentor another team this year. Uh, so that's going to be an exciting uh, competition. So in terms of research, um, you know, I, I talked about the research areas of the individual faculty, um, but the common theme uh, nowadays in uh, the research done by almost all the faculty in this area is somehow tied to this concept of smart grid. Right? So we call this as a paradigm shift because um, it used to be that power is generated in very remote, very large scale centralized generation, coal plants, natural gas plants, and then it is transmitted and delivered to the load centers. So the paradigm shift now is uh, you have ubiquitous generators, very small scale, you know, rooftop PV or slightly larger scale, uh, small scale wind, uh, but they are everywhere, right? So very close to the uh, load centers. And uh, we have you know, sales happening between the local generators to the local customers. Um, you know, ubiquitous ownership. Um, so under this paradigm, uh, what are all the challenges, right? So how do you still maintain the reliability of the grid, maintain the frequency to be you know, very close to 60 hertz all the time, uh, make sure that you don't have um, you know, outages, uh, poor quality issues. So all of them are huge challenges. And the, those are some of the things that uh, our group as well as many other uh, universities and research centers are pursuing. Um, and then there are two large uh, consortium that are uh, many of our power area faculty are members of, and um, many of our research projects are funded through these two consortium, uh, especially the Power Systems Engineering Research Center, PSEC, 
that funds uh, each and every one of the faculty that I showed. And uh, it's a consortium of 12 uh, actually major power related universities uh, and ASU is the lead university. There are about 25 industries uh, as uh, industry members and it covers all the um, uh, ISOs, uh, many of the, the utilities and many uh, power system equipment manufacturers. So it operates under three main stems, markets and uh, t and and the more general power system uh, thrust area. Uh, so among the 12 universities, we have about 40 faculty researchers. Uh, and it is the unique thing about this is all the projects are chosen by the industry to solve some of their like the near term problems. They give us uh, you know, very solid problems to solve. They give us all the data uh, and it's, it's uh, uh, both exciting and extremely uh, useful projects. Uh, the other center is, which is relatively new. It is related to the um, 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 ground vehicles, not only electric vehicles, but all type of ground vehicles. The center is called as EVSTS, stands for Efficient Vehicles and Sustainable Transportation System. Uh, so again, it is a consortium of uh, four universities and about 20 plus uh, industry partners. Uh, all the major automotive like uh, GM, um, Benz, uh, many other uh, Ford, many other leading um, original equipment manufacturers as well as tier one suppliers, they are part of this consortium. Uh, again, it is led by, um, by ASU. Um, and uh, many of our uh, researchers are funded through the center as well. So I mentioned one of the unique uh, facilities that we have are this um, many um, hardware labs, uh, as well as a simulation lab. So the power system simulation lab has uh, software tools. Um, that is uh, so anything related to you know, power engineering, uh, we have that um, software tool, the full industry grade software tool uh, accessible for um, students, um, either for research or for coursework in our power system simulation lab. In addition, some of the hardware labs, the, we have a high voltage lab, the power electronics lab is what is pictured here. Um, then we have uh, electronic controller power systems and the instrumentation lab. More recent addition are the two, two new labs introduced by the uh, Professor Yang Wang on the machine learning lab for power systems and Professor Anamitra Paul for the synchrophaser technology uh, applications in power systems lab. Okay, so that is my last slide and I'm open to any questions you have. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much for uh, presenting. Um, looks like there are a couple of questions in here in the chat and I can, uh, I can help you with those. Um, first question I can see here is, um, uh, oh, can, can you do a, a student is asking, can you do a senior design project in conjunction with thesis for Barrett? Um, I believe those are generally separate. Um, oh, who knows the best answer to that? I'm actually not sure that the senior design. I have had a few, uh, I think two students who do it uh, as part of their, I think it's called honest thesis. Is that what it's called for Barrett? That's it, yeah. yeah. Just I yeah, sure. yeah so uh, so the, it was done both as a senior design project and also counted toward their uh, honors uh, thesis. Um, yeah, yeah. So if you have a thesis advisor, when you get to that point, um, I think it's important to coordinate that with them. But it sounds like it can be done. So thanks, Aiden, for asking that. Um, do you, the, Kyle is asking, do you recommend online students attend in person for the fourth year from the from the our side? That's Absolutely not necessary. Um, we've set it up so you can participate fully uh, um, in whatever campus you like. So um, we don't encourage a campus change for that uh, for that reason. Yeah. Um, and and then, but but just to be clear, if you're, it, it is possible to do a senior design project with Tempe students. That sometimes we do have mixed projects, okay. Tempe and online. Yes. The the. The competition that I mentioned is a senior design project that had like two students um, on campus and two online students last year. Um, yeah, and this this question about research comes up often. Um, uh, Dr. Einar, do you have any, how do you, there's a student asking about undergraduates um, research options and, and can he apply? And generally what I recommend, and I'll let you answer too is that if you're interested in research 
the first thing you should do would be to look at the, the faculty by research area website yes. and then send some emails to faculty asking about them or meet them with office hours to get to know them and to get to know where you're at. And generally undergraduates um, are best suited to start participating after they've had, you know, at least midway through the curriculum. Do you have anything yeah. other else to add to that? Yeah, I totally agree. Um, you know, especially um, in the senior year, you know, there will be some some opportunities. You surely don't do want to do very well in the courses offered by that professor if you're interested in that research. Um, and um, um, you know, those who have like an NSF grants, uh, NSF uh, strongly encourages undergraduate research participation. Um, so those faculty who have some larger NSF grants and think they will be um, actually be looking for some undergraduate researches, maybe during summer or even during regular semesters. So it's good approach uh, any of the 12 faculty that I listed in, the, in an earlier slide. Oh, this is an interesting one. Um, uh, Wes is asking about where the right of ownership falls of senior design projects. So let's say someone wished to continue the project beyond being a student. Um, what's the best way to answer that, you think? Um, you mean intellectual property rights or? Yeah, I think this is an IP uh, or an intellectual property question. Uh, I'm not uh, completely sure. It probably should be negotiated up front, I think, you know, if, if you I suspect any IP issues to come up for, you know, I know for graduate students, uh, like when we send them the offer letter, they actually sign that uh, any IP that results uh, through the research that was supported belongs to ASU. Um, you know, uh, the, the student and the faculty will have some rights, uh, but uh, basically the invention belongs to ASU. And uh, I'm just guessing that that applies to senior design projects uh, as well. Yeah, I think I, there has been a little bit of... Um, uh, the, so Dr. Michael Kazicki and Dr. James Aberley are the, the faculty who are in charge of uh, 488 and 489 are senior design projects. And then both of them are very involved in a, uh, uh, this sort of thing, and they have patents themselves. And I believe they have a means to, to help students with that. So if you have a project that of that nature, that might be something that you own, that's your idea, and you want to continue with it, um, Dr. A. Willie and Kiziki would definitely guide you in the web best way to do that to make sure everybody's uh, information is uh, what it needs to be. That's a great question, and I'm sorry I don't have a complete answer, but that'd be a great thing to do. When you started, make that very clear with Dr. Averly or Kaziki. Um, a couple more questions since we have a minute here. There's this, uh, Dylan is asking, I have a friend who works in uh, CMOS who is discouraging him from going into the power pathway. He stated that power <laughs> is mostly legacy technologies. That's a really interesting question. What do you say? <laughs> Yeah, so that was uh, you know probably the message that I'm trying to convey uh, throughout the the presentation. Right, it is um, it used to be maybe like 20 years ago, but right now it is the most uh, um, interesting hot research area, I would say. Uh, you know because you know the thing that about climate change that is real, right? So no um, no hiding the fact, and uh, um, and anything that you want to do related to climate change. It, boils down to power, right? So whether it's renewable energy or transportation. Uh, and even if um, you know, something catastrophic happens, uh, the resiliency, these are all addressed by you know, power. And we have, uh, yes, power is not just a uh, you know, big transmission and distribution that you have. We have power electronics, there is electric vehicles, um, fast charges. There's so many hot applications for power systems and power electronics, um, yeah. Yeah, so I agree. I wouldn't. I would say pretty much any of our areas, depending on how you um, put it, is uh, depending on where you want to go. We have a, a very good um, placement rate, and our students are in demand um, um, in the power area. So yeah, that was a great question, though. We, we appreciate people asking uh, what's on their minds. So thank you for doing that. Um, uh, let's see. Oh, yeah, yeah, so, Gia, thank you. Yeah, we also, if you want to do um, learn more about senior design and ask that question about IP and all that, um, we do have a pathway specifically for that topic. But that's, so please come back and Dr. Kazigi or Avery will be able to describe that more. Um, uh, and then, 
Looks like Rashid is asking, can you do a 499 individual instruction in power systems? Uh, yes, you can. Uh, 499 courses of individual instructions are approved by the faculty. So that'd be a, if you have someone in mind that has a project or a research area you're very interested in, um, now is the time to start developing those connections to make that happen. Um, and then he's also asking what sort of projects or studies are offered in um, 472. I guess that's a topics or labs or whatever. But what, um, right, so 472 does not have a hardware lab, but it supports a uh, yeah, software simulation tool called Plex. It's uh, again a full industry grade, and it is one of the popularly used uh, uh, simulation tool for power electronics in the industry. So students will be given a license for the full industry version of the uh, Plex software. It's valid for one year. Um, and um, I don't think there is a required course project for 472. We do that in the graduate course 572. Um, but um, you can use that tool to simulate uh, any application that you are interested in. Uh, you can simulate the entire electric vehicle um, system, see uh, you know, what kind of response you get with uh, our hardware simulators. Um, and um, when I used to teach it, there was about eight homeworks and each of those eight homeworks would have some design problems which you actually verify in a Plex simulation. So it is the next best thing to a hardware lab. That's great. And it looks like we have one more here. And um, Kyle is interested in power systems in relation to uh, space mission exploration, um, examples of SpaceX, Blue Origin, Virgin Galactic. Do you recommend, do you still recommend these same classes you discussed? So first off, if you're interested in the power area, um, those are the classes. Um, but I guess the, that I'll start that there are many different pathways that could get you access to those. And if you're interested in power, those would be the best ones. Um, Dr. Ironer, do you have any other yeah. kind of general electrical engineering recommendations for people interested in space missions? Right. So in any of these would be driven by, um, you know, there's a lot of power electronics in it, a lot of electric machines in it. Um, and the core concepts of in the power system analysis, those are all certainly applicable. Um, but within the power group, we don't have anything more specialized than that. Um, outside our area, uh, maybe outside your DCE, I'm not completely sure. If that's yeah. Right. So yeah, Jenner, that's a great question because that shows the the base, you know, electrical engineering bachelor's degree is a very broad degree intended to give you a, a broad exposure. And when you get further, um, that might be something you focus on. Like if you were to do a master's degree, you could focus on a particular area um, more in depth. Uh, but I would say in general um, that uh, that if you're interested in space, allow that to uh, exploration and remember that there that can really be approached from any of our areas. Power is a great choice, obviously, but you know you could be interested in the communication side of things. You could be interested in the um, pretty much any of them. So that that's a it's great to be in a major with kind of an interest, but just allow yourself to. Yeah. Um, you know, as you take our courses, kind of allow yourself to wander a little bit. Um, great. So I think I think those are our questions. Um, so we want to thank Dr. Ayanar for being here. Um, thank you for students for joining us. We love how many of you showed up today. It looks like we got forty five people here. That's fantastic. Thanks for um, you know engaging your major and please show up to all of these. So you're getting some thank yous now, Dr. Ayanar. So again, this is a great way for you to meet faculty and learn more about what we do. So lots of thank yous here. So thanks for the great presentation. Thanks, Bob, and thanks, everyone. Um, really appreciate it. Thank you.